This is lesson 5-2, slopes and intercepts. Let's discuss slope. And we actually have discussed slope already in our last unit. We discussed slope as it relates to rate of change. And that's the key portion of what to think about with slope is that slope and rate of change are really interchangeable terms. The formal definition of slope, just want to make sure my C is correct there. The slope of a line refers to the ratio, so we're dividing, between the change in vertical distance, and again, vertical distance would be on the y-axis, and the change in horizontal distance, and of course, the horizontal distance would be on the x-axis. And again, as we said, slope can also be referred to as rate of change. The letter that we use to represent slope is M. And the reason that we use the letter M is because slope is how you move, is how the line, linear function is moving, is what the slope is. The formula for finding slope is M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, the key part here to remember with these is that these are not exponents. These little numbers down here are called subscripts. And what it means is that the subscript is really just like a last name. We have two things that have the same name in Y and two things that have the same name in X. The subscript gives them different last names because we're talking about different Y values and different X values. The types of slope are as follows. Positive slope is po slopes that go up when we're looking from left to right. When we're talking about slopes and how they move, we have to be thinking about how we read something and we read everything from left to right. So if we're going up from left to right, that's a positive slope. On the converse, negative slope would be slope that goes down from when we're looking from left to right. And then we have a couple of fancy slopes. Zero slope is going to be the slope of a horizontal line. And again, a horizontal line is one that goes from left to right. So this line that I'm drawing right here is one of zero slope. And then we have undefined slope. Now, some people call this no slope. I don't like using that term. I'd rather use undefined slope. And that is when we have a vertical line as such like this. That is undefined slope. And the reason it's undefined is that we really can't measure a slope like that because, quite frankly, there's no way to measure something like that no one can measure that in real life because they would, quite frankly, fall to their death because there's no way to stop along the way to measure something like that. So how do we find slope? An example to the right, and I'll put the steps on the left. The first thing we want to do is take any two points on a line. And in this case, in our example, we have the two points. The next thing that we'll do is we'll name one of the points P1 and we'll make the other one P2. So in my description here, and again, it doesn't matter which one you name P1 and P2. I typically name the first one P1 and I'll name the second one P2. So P1 in this case is going to be 2, 3. And P2 in this case is going to be 5, 8. Assign the subscripts to the X and Y values. X1 and Y1 go to P1. And X2 and Y2 go to P2. Now, it's simply just about going to the formula. And again, every time you're using this, you want to try and write the formula out. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And again, now it just becomes a, a situation of plugging in the plugging the parts into the formula so we'll plug them in so in this case what we have is y2 is 8 y1 is 3 x2 is 5 and x1 
is two. And it's very important that I put the points in the correct, I put the numbers in the correct spots. At this case, the last thing I want to do is simplify. And eight minus three is going to be five. Five minus two is going to be three. And since that doesn't directly simplify, we want to actually leave this as a fraction. And you're going to see why when we start graphing lines using the slope intercept method. But we want to leave all of our slopes in fraction form. Now, if you have something like this, let's just say that uh, it ended up being like 4 over 2. That's easily divisible. We know that 4 divided by 2 is 2. If you're going to get an integral whole number out of that, or an integral answer, I should say, out of that, then you can do that. But in this case where I have 5 over 3, I want to leave that as an improper fraction. And again, you'll see why when we start graphing using the slope intercept method. Here's some examples for you to try. Pause the video at this point to give yourself a chance to try them on your own. So for the first one, again, I'm going to call the first point P1 and the second point P2 for the first one. So we have, again, until I memorize this formula for slope, I'm going to keep writing it. So M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And again, when we have P1 and P2, that becomes X1 and Y1, X2 and Y2. So Y2 in this case is going to be 2, Y1 is 0, X2 is 2, y, X1 is 0, 2 minus 0 is 2, 2 minus 0 is 2. So that's a slope of 1 for my first example. For the second example, I'll do that one in red. And again, so M this time is going to be equal to Y2, which is 5, minus Y1, which is 3, X2, which is 6, minus X1, which is 2. That's going to give me 2 over 4. And we can leave it as such, or we can simplify that to one half. And it is important that you know that two fourths is equal to one half, because if this was a multiple choice question asking you what the slope is, it would have it simplified out. So the answer for the second example is one half. Here's another example for you to try. Pause the video at this point to give yourself a chance to try it on your own. So there are a couple of different ways that we can do this particular example. We can still use our formula because we know that this point here is 0, 2. And we know this point here is 1, 0. So we can, the first way we can do this is certainly just go and use the formula. So M is going to again be equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And I'll use this as P1. And I'll use this one as P2. So Y2 in this case is going to be equal to 0. Y1 is going to be equal to 2. X2 is going to be equal to 1. And X1 will be equal to 0. We have negative 2 over 1, which is equal to negative 2. The other way we can take a look at this is that we look at the definition of what slope is. Again, it's the change in vertical distance and the change in horizontal distance, and it's the ratio of those. So again, the change, and I'm going to use the symbol delta, and this symbol right here, delta, means change. Okay? So it's the change in y over the change in x. And so how is y changing? Well, it looks to be that I'm going down two units. So that would be negative two. And I'm going to the right one unit, so that would be a positive one in the x direction. And there is my slope. So there's two different ways you can do it. Use the formula or just take a look at the picture and see how you're moving up and down and left to right. Let's talk about the intercepts of any line. An intercept is where a line crosses an axis. It's the point at which... Now, when we talk about the word point, we're talking about the fact that we need coordinates for that point. So again, when we're talking about an intercept, we have to make sure that we're using it in the sense of a point. 
The x-intercept is the point, any point where a graph crosses the x-axis. In a function, sometimes, as we talked about in the last unit, there can be multiple x-intercepts. Anytime you have an x-intercept or where the graph crosses the x-axis, the y value of that point is zero. Likewise, the y-intercept is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. There is only one y-intercept in any function. And when we have a situation where we're looking for the y-intercept, the value of x is always going to be zero. So when we're looking to find intercepts, to find the y-intercept, just given a equation of a graph or a function, we want to replace x values with zero and solve for y. On the converse, when we have an x-intercept, we want to replace the y's with zero and solve for x. Here's some examples. We're going to find the y-intercept and x-intercept for each given equation. Let's start with y equals x minus 5. So the first thing I'll do for x-intercept is I want to plug 0 in for y. So 0 equals x minus 5. And now I'm going to solve for x. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides. And 5 is equal to x. Now the x-intercept then we have to write as a point. So the coordinates of that point are 5, 0, because 0 is always what the y-coordinate will be for any x-intercept. For the y-intercept, I want to plug 0 in for x and solve for y. So y is equal to 0 minus 5. 0 minus 5 is equal to negative 5. And so as a point, it is 0, comma, negative 5. Here's a second example for you to try. Pause the video at this point to give yourself a chance to try it on your own. So for the x-intercept, I'm going to plug in 0 for y. So we have negative x equals negative 2 times 0 plus 2. That's negative x equals 0 plus 2. So negative x equals 2. We'll divide that by negative 1, so x equals negative 2. That makes the x-intercept negative 2, 0. For the y-intercept, we go with 0, because again, negative 0 is just simply 0, equals negative 2y plus 2. We'll subtract 2 from both sides to get negative 2 equal to negative 2y. Divide by negative 2, and 1 equals y. So the y-intercept point is going to be 0, 1. If you're having any issues in any portion of this lesson, please make sure you are emailing me or consulting me in class.